Getting sick professional shots. Oh my god, bro, like literally everyone is here. They're literally ruining the shot. Hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a shit one. So, Freewell, which is a filter company, recently sent me a message and invited me to test out their new K2 magnetic filter system. They also sent me a diffusion mist filter and a gradient filter, which we'll get into later. But the reason why I'm talking to you about these filters at the moment is because they sent me this email and this is completely legit. It's not photoshopped, I swear. Hey Mike, your videos suck and you only take photos at night. We've never seen you take a decent photo during the day. We bet you can't take a decent photo using our filter kit. And when I first read that, I was pretty upset. What? Ah, oh, God damn it! But then I realized that they're right. I do avoid shooting during the day. I can just never get a photo that I'm happy with. I accept your challenge, Free Will. Let's go take some photos. And also, stick around to the end of this video to find out how you can enter into an editing competition and win a $500 camera voucher from me and also win some of my presets. All right, let's get started. I'll, uh, I'll fix this later. If there's anywhere that you're gonna need filters, right now is the place you're gonna want them. God damn, look at that. And it's like raining today as well, so we just couldn't have asked for better conditions. Like everything just looks so green and lush. Gotta figure out the composition now. And also, oh not try and slip and die in the process. Oh. Me. oh my God. It is so dangerous, so slippery here. So we have two different filters here. We have a snow mist, black mist, cine bloom, whatever you want to call them. Or we also have a gradient filter. Sky in your image is going to be darker and allow you to get a longer exposure of everything. So your sky is not going to be overexposed while your foreground is going to be nicely exposed on this shot. Because there's no sky in this image, we're not going to be using this one today. Instead, we're going to get a nice misty shot using the snow mist. Wait, so with the snow mist, like, is it actually made to make the shot look more misty? Is that it? I don't know if you can tell here, but you can see in there, it looks like almost dust particles. It has a really sort of fine mist to it. And this is a half strength filter. It's gonna open it up and then just chuck it in. Up here on the screen, I'm just gonna show you a range of different shots of um, without using the filter, with using the filter and different shutter speeds I'm choosing. There's a huge difference here between, these are just the raws straight out of the camera, using an ND, using a longer shutter speed, plus a snow mist filter, versus nothing at all coming just down here with the camera itself. Looks great, man. I think that, yeah, the, the misty filter looks really cool because it like evens out the highlights and stuff. Getting sick professional shots. All right, let's pick a different angle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my god, bro, like literally everyone is here. They're literally ruining the shot. If I don't have any ND filters, I can't get a really nice long exposure of the water and still have a really low aperture. Because I've got the ND filter set to nine stops, it's really gonna darken my image. I can open my aperture up to f2.8 and get a nice sort of depth of field with that long exposure. It's gonna look mint. Looks a bit shit with this here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Because it's moving. Oh uh, yeah, I'll just show you. But it is better, like from oh, there. Oh yeah, it shows depth. To there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is nicer like having just these trees in it. Maybe we'll see what a portrait shot's gonna look like. It's gonna be a sick shot. Why are you so happy? 
because free well filters have just made it so nice and no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly not much of a filter person so like using this many filters to this complexity I wasn't sure about the effects initially when I was like gonna make this video but it's just made such a huge difference than just like rocking up here with no filters whatsoever and just like taking pictures versus like being able to take a really long exposure during the day it just creates such a unique perspective on your shot plus you got to give the location props as well. Like the right location, we are looking for movement. That's really got to make the biggest difference here. So I'm super happy. Yeah, I, I definitely stepped a little bit outside my comfort zone, coming out in the middle of the day, trying to take some long exposures and get some photos that I'm really happy with because I mean, I think most photographers can agree with this. Like we all set pretty high standards for ourselves and you're always your own worst critic as well. So I was like, coming out here I'm like I love shooting nature but I just feel like I'm never any good at it being able to use a longer exposure and using ND filters it's been really nice to just give it a go and get amazing results yeah I'm super stoked you jealous yep yes yeah I actually All right. am. and guys that is how you make your friends <laughs> jealous with photography thank you very much for watching like and <laughs> let's go edit yeah all right first off always good to do the ye old lens correction probably gonna drop a bit of vignetting here as well um, don't really need to touch transform. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra vignetting just to start off my image. I think the main difference with this edit is gonna come from masking and selective adjustments, which is actually what I use for most of my editing. First of all, let's just sort of start with the basic editing. Sort of want a bit of a warmer tone for this image, so maybe get the greens sort of popping. Take some contrast out to start with. Maybe something around there. I feel like the highlights could use a little bit of a boost. I'm gonna bring some shadows out of my image as well, just to see what I'm working with here. The whites can come up a bit, and so can the blacks can come out a bit to get some detail out of the ground here as well. A little bit of texture, and I'm actually a big fan of taking clarity out of my images, especially for nature shots. And we'll chuck in a bit of dehaze, cause why not? Life's short. Okay, this is the real kicker. I'm gonna add like quite a bit of vibrance and saturation, probably an unholy amount for most of you, but something like that. But trust me, I have a vision for this edit and I think I can always come back and change it, but I think I'm gonna start with that. Okay, let's get into the tone curve. I'm gonna add a little bit of fade here and crush the blacks a bit. I'm gonna bring down my shadows. Before we get into the tone curve a bit more, I'm gonna actually play around with my colors and just get my colors right before we keep doing the rest of this edit. Okay, already big difference here. I'm sort of trying to go for this like matte look in a way. I don't know, it's sort of hard to explain. You're just gonna have to bear with me. It's sort of like a matte yet vibrant look. So let's start with the shadows. So I am looking for sort of like a dark green shadow. I don't need too much saturation. Mid-tones sort of would like a bit more like yellowy, like warmer mid-tones, which is sort of affecting like the rock and parts of the waterfall here as well. Trying to make this look like it's something out of Indiana Jones, basically. <laughs> we don't need too much saturation there. Bring some luminance up, bump the tones. And for the highlights, probably don't need much at all here. A touch of blue, which is gonna go on the waterfall. Yeah, nice. Okay, I probably don't actually need to touch the RGB on the tone curve, because I think what we're doing in the color grading is sort of achieving that already. So now what I'm gonna do is Shift M. I've got a radial mask here. I'm gonna create one here, invert it. This is gonna affect everything except for the waterfall and just bring down my exposure a little bit. New radial filter, which is just going to affect the waterfall now, so we're not gonna invert it. And bring the highlights up a little bit and the shadows out of it a bit, something like there, and maybe a bit more texture as well, create some sharpness on it and just temperature down the slightest amount. I think what I need is like a graduated filter from the bottom here, bring the shadows up, because I still want the details on the ground. I don't want it to be too dark down there. Maybe even a brush tool, come into the brush and just very generously click over any of the dark, really dark spots. I'm just trying to find a nice balance between not too much harsh shadows, but also still trying to create a central focus on the waterfall. I'm just gonna add another radial filter that's gonna go sort of over the sky region here. Sometimes I like to jump in the, what do you even call this mode? This mode by clicking L, you click it twice. So it goes into like half opacity and then full darkness. And even just standing back, like stand over here and just look at my picture for a bit. I'm actually really happy with this shot. This is like one of my favorite shots I've done 
in a while. Especially for nature, like, always have troubleshooting nature. Maybe a bit of orange can come out. There's the before, after. Before, after. Quite happy with that. To help make this photo, I started off using the one to five ND, and I had it set to five stops, but it still wasn't dark enough for me to get the 30 second exposure I was looking for. So I chucked on the six to nine ND filter and cranked it to nine stops, which helped me get the results in this image. Also the magnet strength on these is really good. Like I think they got it really well. Then it's just, you're gonna see that, but the amount of trust I have in this because right here is my computer. <laughs> but that's just not going anywhere. Now having a magnetic filter system is so much nicer than a traditional filter where you have to like sort of screw it on and off. Although it doesn't sound like much work to like screw on and off your filters, but when it comes down to taking photos and being on a shoot, it really does come down to the seconds. To have to like stop and then unscrew filter and then re-screw filter on, it can sort of take you out of the flow of things. And for me personally, I just get super frustrated when I'm not getting the thread just right and then you know missing shooting great photos at a sunset or something like that you know so having magnets is definitely the future and freewell claim that you can add this kit onto any lens from 82 millimeters going down to 52 millimeters which covers every single one of my lenses except the 105 people always forget about the 105 mil okay so how does this thing actually work so first of all you put your adapter ring onto your preferred lens Next, you put on the main base, like this whole thing, and then screw it into place using the little red threads here to make sure, you know, it's tight and you've got security, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then if you don't have it screwed in all the way, you can move it around and use the leveler. When you have a gradient filter in, you know you're gonna get a perfect line with the horizon. Then you put in the True Color VND base filter to avoid any color shifts in your image. And then you add on the actual ND filter itself. Now you can either take the one to five ND filter or the six to nine ND filter and flip them around to get polarizing filters, which means I can also use this kit for my car photography, unless I'm shooting on the 105. So like I showed in the video before, what I love about this the most is that you can open up the actual plate here and slot in your preferred filters to suit your needs. This kit is just super versatile, sort of like an all-in-one filter kit. Some of my feedback though, if you are gonna be carrying it in this box, so you have all your adapter rings and your ND filters and the plate itself, it does take up quite a bit of room in your camera bag. So for me, it's something, you know, I'm gonna be planning to bring these filters on one of my shoots, but it does have a little sort of lanyard thing here. So I guess you could just like clip it to your belt or like, I don't know chuck a strap over it. And also this is not gonna work on certain wide angle lenses. But I guess that's sort of just a problem with certain wide angle lenses in general. I used to have an eight to 16 mil Sigma. And then after that I had a 15 to 30 Tamron. And both of those lenses have this sort of like bulb shape, which makes it really difficult to put filters onto it. And any filter mounts and stuff that I used to try and when I was looking for them, they were always really expensive. If you have like a wide angle bulb sort of lens, what we need is like some sort of like rubber mount <laughs> that can like strap to it and then you can put your magnetic filters on it. That'd be nice. And then whoever's making that while you're at it, if you can make like a 12 to 400 mil F 1.4 lightweight compact lens as well, that would be great. So the verdict. I haven't talked about filters that much on my channel, but I think having a good set of filters with you takes you from being a good photographer to a great photographer. Freewell told me that the first thousand kits of this that they're gonna be selling, they're gonna be doing a 10% discount. And I was like, that's not enough. So they came back to me and told me that once this kit comes out, they're gonna be selling them for $500 USD. And then to the first thousand kits that they sell, they're gonna be giving a 30% discount. Anyway, you think you can edit this shot better? I have the photo linked in my description so you can download the raw shot. First off, to edit into this comp, you need to be subscribed to my channel. Download the photo, edit the photo, upload it to your Instagram, make sure you use the hashtag North Borders and tag me in your shots so I can see them. And just tag me in your shots in general. I love seeing your photos. Just Tag me. There will be five winners in total. My top five favorite edits will go into a poll on my Instagram for you to vote. First place will receive a $500 cash prize. I call it a photography voucher, but you know, if you need like a new air intake for your car, I'm also 
happy to sponsor that, so whatever. $500 cash prize for the winner, and you also win my V3 presets. And to the other four winners, you will also win my V3 presets. Good luck. Winners will be announced on this date on my Instagram story, so make sure you're following me at North Borders. Thank you very much for watching. Keep having yourself a shit one, and I will see you in the next one. Hey, Mike, you stupid, stupid. <laughs> God damn. Is something in the foreground? So maybe we can even go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Easily, which is nice. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, God damn it!